So far we have discussed what are complex valued functions and what are the mappings associated to them. So mapping is a geometrical way of visualizing a given complex valued function. And of course it helps us in understanding the behavior of the function. From now on we are going to choose some particular examples of complex valued function and discuss the mappings associated to them. Our first example is going to be linear transformations. Now these are some very simple but important elementary complex valued functions and they have some very interesting geometrical interpretations as well. Now this is the first part of our discussion on linear transformation. Now let's recall what is a linear transformation. It is a linear polynomial so it's a particular case of a polynomial where we have the form L of Z is equal to AZ plus B. Now A and B are fixed complex numbers and Z is the complex variable. Now if we change the values of A and B then we will be getting some particular examples of linear transformation. Now from further on we are going to choose some particular cases where we choose some particular values of A and B and see their geometrical interpretation or we see what are the mappings associated to them. Our first example is the case of translation. So in this translation we choose A to be equal to 1 and B is any complex number A plus iota B. Now in this case we call it T. So T stands for the translation. So T of Z becomes so Z plus B. In particular if Z is equal to X plus iota Y then T of Z becomes X plus iota Y plus a plus iota B. Now if we collect the real and imaginary parts the expression becomes the following Y plus B. Now this is the real and imaginary parts of this complex valued function. Now let's see what is the geometrical interpretation of this uh, function. Now as we can see that when we apply T on a complex variable z then we add this complex number b which is a fixed complex number uh, every time we apply this t on z we add this complex number b so if we represent this complex number b by a vector in the complex plane then basically when we are applying t on z then we are translating this z through this vector b so in particular if we have a set A which is the rhombus in this complex plane then applying T on this A means that we are displacing this rhombus in the complex plane through this vector B. Okay. So why this is the case? Because each number of this rhombus is translated by this vector B. So in particular, so this part of the rhombus goes to this vertex. This part of the rhombus goes to this vertex and this part of the vertex, this part of the rhombus goes to this vertex and up to so on and in particular if we have any point inside this rhombus then this is also translated through this vector B. So each and every point of this rhombus is translated by this vector B. So in other words the whole rhombus is translated. And of course if we change this vector B uh, then uh, of course the translation, the direction and the magnitude of the translation will also be changed. Okay, So we can see that when we are changing this vector B then the translation, the direction and the magnitude of this uh, translation is also changed. Okay. So uh, in this uh, uh, picture we can see uh, the images from the Z plane and uh, images from the W plane in the same complex plane. This helps us in understanding the behavior of the function more efficiently. Now the next observation is uh, these translations are one to one and on to function on the entire complex plane. So in other words we can talk about what are the inverses of these linear transformations. These particular case of linear transformation. So in this case if we assume that W is equal to T of Z, W is the 
output and z is the input so in this case this is equal to z plus b now we know that if the function is one to one and on to then we can solve the function uh, in terms of w so which is very simple in this case we can find the value of z in terms of b so this becomes w minus b so this implies that the inverse function is basically w minus b okay and if we uh, use the same variable so this implies that f inverse of z is equal to z minus p so this is the inverse of this translation and we can see that in this case we are subtracting this vector b so in other words this is kind of inverse translation so if we uh, apply this translation then we move through this vector b and when we apply the inverse translation we are moving back with a vector minus b so that's why they are inverses of each other okay so in particular if we calculate t inverse of w and if we take the components of w to be u plus iota v then uh, the form of the inverse translation becomes u minus a this is the real part plus iota v minus b this is the imaginary part now the next particular case of linear transformation is rotation now in the case of rotation we take b to be equal to 0 and we choose this complex number a such that its modulus is equal to 1 so let's see what will happen in this case so the linear transformation becomes r of z is equal to a into z now if we want to understand its geometrical meaning more efficiently then we use in this case polar coordinates so if the modulus of a is equal to 1 so the form of a becomes e raised to power iota alpha where alpha is the argument and if we choose z to be equal to r e raised to power iota theta then in this case the rotation function becomes r of z is equal to r e raised to power iota alpha e raised to power iota theta so which is equal to r e raised to power iota alpha plus theta so this is the rotation linear transformation now why this is the rotation now we can observe that when we apply r on this complex number z then the output is r e raised to power iota theta plus alpha now the input is z is equal to r e raised to power iota theta so what is the difference between input and output now the modulus of z is not changed so what is changed is basically this argument so the argument is increased by this angle alpha so in other words if we take a complex number and if we apply this transformation r on z then the number will be uh, rotated around the origin because the angle of this uh, the argument of this complex number has been increased okay so if this is or complex number then it will be rotated by an angle alpha okay so it becomes this so let's say if this is z1 then this is r of z1 similarly if we have another number let's say z2 then it will also be rotated by an angle alpha r of z2 and similarly if we have origin then the origin will remain the same so in in particular if we choose a set a which is a triangle then applying this rotation transformation on a means the whole triangle is basically rotated around the origin so now we can see that if we change the value of alpha then the rotation will be changed so as we increase alpha the whole the square is translated and of course if we choose some other subset of the plane then it will also be rotated now the important thing to observe it this transformation is rigid so why this transformation is rigid because the shape of this set is not changed okay so square remains the square and this arbitrary shape 
remains the same. But what is the effect? So the effect is it is just rotated around the origin and nothing else has been changed about this set. Now we can see that this inverse transformation of this rotation. Uh, so R of Z is on to and one to one function. on the entire complex plane. So if this is on to and one to one, then we can talk about what is the inverse of this uh, rotation transformation. Okay, so uh, if W is equal to R of Z, and we know what is R of Z, so R of Z is basically R e raised to power out of theta, multiplied by e raised to power out of alpha. Now what is the inverse? So this is basically z. So we can calculate the value of z in terms of uh, w. So this becomes e raised to power minus out of alpha into w. Now if w is equal to, so if we write down this w in its polar form, rho e raised to power out of phi, then this uh, inverse function becomes so z is equal to f inverse of w is equal to rho e raised to power alpha pi minus alpha. Now as we can see that if we uh, transform using this rotation transformation then we are rotated by an angle alpha. And if we use the inverse transformation then we can observe that we just subtract this angle alpha from the argument. So in other words we are uh, rotating in the opposite direction of alpha. So that's why we can easily observe geometrically as well that uh, this is the inverse transformation of the rotation. So precisely we have the following description. So this is R inverse of W which is equal to W e raised to power iota alpha. So at the end we have rho e raised to power iota phi minus alpha. And uh, this is one to one and on to mapping on the entire complex plane. Now the next linear transformation that we want to discuss is magnification. Now for magnification we take b to be equal to 0 and we take a is basically k which is a real number. Okay, So k is a real number and it is in fact a positive real number. So in this case uh, the transformation becomes so m of z is equal to so k z. So if z is equal to x plus iota y, then the transformation m becomes k into x plus iota k into y. Now in this uh, case, we have further two uh, cases. So depends if k is greater than one or if k is less than 1. And of course, if k is equal to 1, then we can see that there will be no change. Okay, So if k is equal to 1, so this is just identity. Okay, So m of z is equal to z. And this transformation is not doing anything. It is just uh, uh, an identity transformation. So we have this uh, transformation, which is kx plus iota ky. And of course, it depends uh, whether the value of k is less than 1 or the value of k is greater than 1. So if the value of k is less than 1, then it reduces the distance between the points by a factor k. And if k is greater than 1, then it has the effect of stretching the distance between the points of the factor k. So in this case, we can see that this is uh, the case when k is greater than 1. And similarly, if k is less than 1, then it will be squeezed down okay so this triangle will be squeezed down to a very tiny triangle okay so this is the case when k is less than 1 and this is the case when k is greater than 1 okay so why this is happening so when we when we have k greater than 1 then we can easily see that we are uh, scaling up uh, this uh, x coordinate and y coordinate by the same scale k and if k is less than 1 then we are scaling down, in other words, we are kind of squeezing 
this triangle to a very tiny triangle if k is less than 1. Now, given a linear transformation, we can observe that uh, L of z is equal to az plus b. Okay? So, if we write down this a in the form L of z is equal to k e raised to power alpha, alpha z plus b. And of course, we can do that because a is a complex number and we can write down this complex number a in the form k e raised to power iota alpha. Now, uh, we have observed uh, through three different cases uh, when we choose some particular cases uh, for a and b then we have uh, translation, we have magnification and we have rotation. And from this transformation we can observe that this k is basically responsible for the magnification and this alpha is responsible for the rotation. Okay, so this is for rotation and this k is for magnification and this b is responsible for translation. Okay, so we can say that if this is the linear transformation then this linear transformation rotates the point through this angle which is the argument of this complex number A and it magnifies this complex number Z by the factor K and of course if K is greater than 1 it will be uh, scaled up and if K is less than 1 it will be scaled down but it is always a non-negative in fact a positive uh, real number and of course uh, in this transformation B is responsible for the translation. So, we can say that a linear transformation is a composition of translation, rotation and magnification. And given a linear transformation L of z is equal to A z plus B, we can calculate its inverse transformation uh, because it is 1 to 1 and on to onto the W plane. So, that is why we can calculate its inverse. So, if W is equal to L of z, then we can calculate its inverse. So, we can calculate the value of z in the following way. So, A z is equal to W minus B and z is equal to W over A minus B over A. And uh, this is in fact the inverse transformation which is a function of W. And if we choose to write down z instead of w, then the inverse transformation becomes, so L inverse of z is equal to z over A minus B over A. And of course, we can see that if we compose L with L inverse of z, then we will get z. In either way, in other words, if we apply L first and then apply L inverse, then we again get z. So, these are inverse transformations of each other. In other words, geometrically speaking, if I apply L, then I will be translating, rotating and magnifying it. And if I apply the inverse transformation, then I, I will be reversing the whole geometrical process. So, that is precisely is the inverse transformation of linear transformation. Now, in this part, we discussed the geometrical meaning of linear transformations. In the next part, we will discuss some examples about these linear transformations.